You are listening to Productivity Straight Talk with your host, Amber De La Garza. Amber is a sought-after productivity coach, trainer, speaker, and writer who gives entrepreneurs the straight talk on personal productivity. No BS, fluff, or overused jargon. Just actionable strategies to get results and succeed in business. And here is your host, Amber De La Garza, the productivity specialist. Welcome, and thank you for listening to Productivity Straight Talk. Today is episode 121, Productivity Plus Profitability, Why You Need Both to Succeed in Business. If you're an entrepreneur who wants actionable solutions to maximize profits, reduce stress, and make time for what matters most, then you're in the right place, and I'm so glad you've joined me. Today is an Encore episode, and it's the last of our four-week series of Encore episodes. So if you're new here, this is a new episode for you. And if you're a longtime loyal listener, you may have not heard this episode either because it's going way back to episode 35. However, this is the one that I love referring people to because it is jam-packed full of goodies and Well, major perspective changes, which is my favorite kind of learning. I really love to learn from people that change my perspective on something that I thought I knew about that make me go, hmm, I never thought of it that way. So I think you're in for a great episode here today. My goal is for you to determine what it will take for you to improve your productivity so that you can become more effective more efficient, and see your profitability drastically increase. I'm looking forward to bringing this episode to you because you will discover me unpacking the definition of productivity. And if you like it, it's my gift for you. What productivity is not, and that may surprise you. How improved productivity drives increased profits how to identify your three high-priority, highly productive activities you should consistently be focusing on, and so much more. And stay to the end because I have some bonus content that I've added to this training in the last few years that I really, really want you to hear. And so it's going to be an added fourth bucket of high-value activities. So stay to the end. I'm going to give you a quick run-through of why that bucket is so important and why I've added it since this episode recording Now, before we dive into today's topic, I want to share with you one of the ways that we may be able to work together. Do you need a breakthrough in your business? Do you have like one big challenge that you would like some insights on, a new perspective you'd like to be coached on? Then perhaps working with me privately during a one-on-one strategy session is right for you. You'll receive out-of-the-box solutions, helpful resources, and empowering coaching on productivity challenges of your choice. Just head on over to theproductivityspecialist.com forward slash strategy session. And now let's get to the straight talk. I want to begin with some definitions so that we're all on the same page. Number one, productivity as I defined it is productivity is investing your best time into your best activities. Now we will unpack that definition further in just a moment, but I also want to be super clear on what we're talking about with regards to profits. Simply put, our profits are the net proceeds after total revenue minus expenses. To unpack my definition of productivity, let's talk about what productivity is not. Productivity is not about being organized, and I think you know that. Now, a lot of productivity experts correlate being organized with being productive, but the truth is is that you all know people that are super organized. They have clean desks, every paper is put back in its place, but they're not focusing on the right activities. In fact, they may be focused more on being organized and less about getting the activities done that will actually get them closer to their goals. Second, productivity is not about being efficient. And again, you'll read a lot and a lot of people will tell you that productivity is about being efficient. And I'm here to tell you it is not because the truth is, is we can be efficient about the wrong activities. And again, it's not going to get us any closer to our goals or vision of success. Now, I do want to say that while being organized and efficient can help you be more productive, it is not the same. 
I think that there is a huge place of conversation to be had and skill sets to be learned and time and energy to be put into being more organized and efficient. Because after all, if you're not wasting your time looking for lost paperwork or your keys or doing activities that really truly are purposeful and important inefficiently, you can reinvest that time in high value activities. There is a time and place and a conversation to be had about organization and efficiency, but that does not get us confused with what productivity is. So with productivity being investing your best time into your best activities, I want to focus on how you can do that more often with consistency and on the right activities. I also want to just say right now why I have you is that productivity is not about being busy. At the end of a long day when you feel spent and busy and you did a hundred things, that is not a productive day. And productivity is not about getting everything done. You will never hear me come on here talking about, I'm going to give you this tip or strategy or bring in this expert that's going to show you how to get it all done. The fact is, is that the sooner you can reconcile with the truth that you will never get it all done, the better off you'll be. Productivity is about investing your best time into your best activities that will move you towards your goals and vision of success. So it is your job to determine what those best activities are. And as we go further in today's episode, I'm going to help you get much, much clearer about what your best activities are. So you may be asking, what does productivity and profitability have to do with each other? Everything. Everything. If you are focusing on the right activities, you'll be focusing on the activities that will grow your business and increase your profitability. Now I get it, not everyone has the same business goals or in business for the sole purpose of profits. But no matter what your goal, your profitability keeps you in business. Profitability ensures you stay in business and keeps you helping people by serving the world with your talents. With more profits, you can help more people. Profitability gives you the ability to make a huge impact for you, your family, your community, and for those you serve through your business. Ensuring that you're profitable provides job security for those who work for you and your family. Making money is a good thing. Being profitable is a great thing. Let me repeat that. Being profitable is a great thing. In my experience working with entrepreneurs, it is rare to find an unproductive person running a profitable business. Or on the other hand, a productive person running an unprofitable business. They go hand in hand. It's important then to improve your productivity to increase your profitability. Today, I'm going to talk to you about how you can be more productive and more profitable in your business. As an entrepreneur, you have chosen to live a life by design. No doubt you want freedom both with your time and your finances. But are you doing everything it takes to excel so that you can remain an entrepreneur? Many of you are just reactively going through the motions of being a business owner. You're keeping yourself busy with activities that aren't getting you closer to your goals and vision of success. If you want more business and you want to make more money, you need to run a profitable business. And that starts with making the choice to be productive on a consistent basis. To be profitable, your time is best invested in three activities, proactively and consistently. The first one is marketing. I want you to think of marketing as visibility. How do people find out about you? How do they know what you do? How do they know that your business even exists? The next one is sales. Now, if you're doing marketing correctly, then you have an influx of enough people coming to you so that you can have sales conversations. I want you to think of the activities of sales is when you're having a conversation with somebody and asking for their business. And the third thing is that when you're servicing your clients, how do you deliver your talents? How do you service your clients? Are you a service provider? Do you provide a product? How is it that you provide the service to your clients? Now, those three, I want you to keep in mind, and I want you to be very clear that one absolutely leads into the next and the next. If you're not focused on marketing at all, chances are you're simply not having the ability to have enough sales conversations. And if you're not focusing on sales conversations, you're surely not having enough clients to serve. So in my opinion, every small business owner needs to be hyper-focused on these three key areas, marketing, sales, and servicing your clients. If you're a solopreneur, this is you in all three areas. 
But think about this as if it was a large corporation. If your business was Sears or Walmart or any of the large companies, I'm trying to think of some examples, but you know where I'm going with this. If it was a large company, each of these three areas would have its own department. And for each department, every department would probably have multiple employees, all working for the same goal of improving their marketing efforts, getting out there and being more visible. The sales team would be all about their goals of how many conversions can they get? How many sales can they make? And then your department that actually services your clients would be about customer service, retention, providing great value. But the truth is that most of you that are listening to this episode, you're doing all three. Or even if you're not physically doing all three, as the CEO of your company, you are solely responsible for the people that work in each of these departments. And you're responsible for their results. Even if you're not the doer in each of these categories, it is your job as the CEO to ensure success, hiring the right people, having the right processes, and most importantly, having each department reach their goals. But if you're the doer, you need to be focused on each of these activities consistently. I was just thinking back when I was prepping for this episode, how my business has evolved over the last five years. When I first got into business, I thought, well, I provide a great service. I know that I can help entrepreneurs improve their skill set of productivity. And I knew that there was a need out there. And I thought, well, if I could just fine tune my services and give great service and results, my business will do great. But as I focused solely on those activities, I quickly realized that when I was not being focused on marketing and getting out in the marketplace, not just in my local area of Las Vegas, but nationally or worldwide, that I was really limiting the growth of my business. And then after I did marketing for so long and tried improving that with social media and doing all kinds of things. So let me give you an example. Right now, my marketing efforts are that I blog regularly. I have a podcast. I write for five different online magazines. I do at least four podcast interviews on other people's podcasts a month. I speak regularly locally. I also speak nationally. I get hired to speak, but that's also marketing because more people get to see me and know what I'm about. That's just the tip of the iceberg. That's everything I'm doing for marketing, but in no way did I do that on day one. And then after my marketing got so good and I had an influx of people asking about my services, I realized I really need to be focusing on my sales skills. How do I convey my messaging of value? How do I speak to people so that they understand how I can help them? That was a whole nother skill set. And so as I've also gone through my own entrepreneurial journey, I have looked at, well, what are the best activities in each of these buckets, both marketing, sales, and then servicing my clients. And I hope you know that as we uncover some of the activities in each of these buckets, that as your business evolves and you get additional support and you can delegate your activities, which are considered your high value, high productive activities, will change for you. But what is so important is that you need to be super clear about it. When you first get started, you might think you doing your own website is something that can fall under the marketing bucket. But the truth is, is that yes, you need a website so that you can increase your visibility with SEO, but that is not your best activity. That is not your zone of genius. And in fact, a good way of knowing is, is the activity something that someone else can do for you? So when you look at what I do for my marketing, this podcast episode, I have my assistant helping me fine tune and write and produce the actual show. But I initially come up with the ideas and I brain dump and I give a raw idea of exactly what I want in the episode. And then she fine tunes it. And then I go back and I finish it up. Now, if I was responsible for writing every episode from beginning to end, that wouldn't allow me to invest my time in other activities. Now, the one activity in this whole process that I absolutely can't outsource at this time in my business is actually recording the episode. Now, that is my highest value activity with regards to getting visible and marketing myself and my business. But as my business grows, is it true that perhaps some way, somehow down the road, I could outsource someone else hosting the Productivity Straight Talk show? It could still be all my intellectual property and my ideas, and I can even guest on my own show. So I really want you to think about where you're at in your business currently and what activities can only you do. 
Okay, that was a little tangent for me about giving some examples about how I've evolved over time, but I think that you'll find it super helpful. As a small business owner, you may not feel like you have enough time to do your three highest value activities consistently, the ones that will actually grow your business and make you the most money, and I get it. I hear it. I hear it every day from business owners just like you. I'm too overwhelmed. I'm exhausted. I'm out of time. There's never enough time. I can't do that. There's too much to do. I don't know what to focus on. I want to tell you that I hear you, but it doesn't need to be that way. I want to share with you one of my favorite quotes. It's by Jim Rohn, and he says, Time is our most valuable asset, yet we tend to waste it, kill it, and spend it rather than invest it. I want you to think of the activities that it takes to run your business as four buckets. And we've talked about three of them already. So the first bucket is marketing. The second bucket is sales. And the third bucket is servicing your clients, all of which results in making you money. But there's one more bucket that we're going to talk about today, and we're going to call it the other bucket. And it's everything else you invest your time in that's not directly related to marketing, sales, or servicing your clients. And I think you know what I mean. Every day is I've got to do this and I've got to do that. And I got stuck in my emails and I'm returning phone calls and I have to rewrite a contract. I mean, the list can literally go on and on. Are you still doing your own books? Are you answering your own phones? What is it that's keeping you busy all day long that is not in the other three buckets of marketing, sales, and servicing your clients? Our days can literally fly by like a blink of an eye, and I get it. But if you're exhausted at the end of the day with nothing to show for it, then that means that you've been working in your other bucket. Now, I don't want to minimize the other bucket, and I'm not living in a fairy tale land. I live in the other bucket as well sometimes. After all, we run a business. We're not quite to the place where we're flying all over the world and the company's running itself. No, we're in the day to day. And the truth is, is that you're going to spend time in the other bucket. But what I want to challenge you to is that you don't live in the other bucket. And if you're looking at your time as an investment, that you're looking at it as how do I regularly and consistently invest time into the marketing bucket, the sales bucket, and servicing your client's bucket. Now, if you are exhausted and you're not sure how you spent yesterday or even today, that's a problem. Because I want you to be able to review your day at the end of the day and feel like you won the day, that you conquered the day that the activities you did mattered, that you were able to make a big impact in your business because you did the marketing that it took for people to find you, that you closed the sales that it's gonna take to actually service your clients all so that you can be more profitable. Now, you may be hearing me get a little excited here. And if you were watching me record this podcast, you would see my hands flying all over the place. In fact, you might even be hearing my desk moving. And the reason is because... I actually started my business because I saw entrepreneurs all around me burning out, that they had an idea, that they had a way in which they wanted to serve people and serve the world. They had a passion. And yet, because they were busy day in and day out and overwhelmed and the inefficiencies of their business just got to them, and truthfully, simply put, they were not productive they ended up burning out. And now they've cheated the world of everything they had to offer. And I believe that productivity is a skill set. It's a skill set that can be learned. And once it's learned, I believe it's a choice. And it's a choice that we make every day. And I am here today. And the whole reason that I even have my company is so that I can share this message with as many entrepreneurs so that no one needs to be going through this, that nobody needs to be fighting time and hating their business, the business that they once loved. I think this lies in having specific, specific clarity on what their productive activities are. And in fact, you know, we're on episode 35, but if you go back through some of the earlier episodes where I interviewed a lot of different people, a lot of different case studies, okay, of entrepreneurs, you will see a theme. And not to do a spoiler alert, but the theme is, is that each of them were super clear about their top three activities that they were never to negotiate on, that they 
were really clear that if they focused their time on these top three activities on a consistent basis, that their business would grow, that they would be more profitable. And you'll also hear stories about how they hired assistants and that that was their primary job when they hired them. I have these three high priority activities and it is your job to ensure that I stay in those three high priority activities most often. I don't know that you absolutely need an assistant to ensure that you're focused on those, but the message is, is that because they were so clear, they knew how to invest their time. The truth is, is that if you're not consistently investing your time into your high value activities, you're going to be out of business because you're not going to be profitable enough to be sustainable. You see, not all time is created equal because if your time is not spent purposefully, it doesn't make you money. What you need to do is invest the majority of your time into the right activities and not in the other bucket. You need to be strategic and intentional with your time consistently to reap higher profits. And when you work more productively, you'll have more time to spend on the right activities that make you more money. You'll have more time to spend on sales, marketing, and servicing your clients, which compounded over time means a lot more money for you. So let's factor that into the equation. I want you to think again about these buckets. For every minute that you spend in servicing your clients, I want to multiply that by a productivity factor of eight. Next, I want you to think of the next bucket and every bucket. So every time you're investing your time into the sales bucket, I want you to think of that as a multiplier of five. And for the third bucket, which is marketing, I want you to think of that as a productivity factor multiplier of three. So let's repeat that. Marketing gets a productivity multiplier of three. Sales gets a productivity multiplier of five. And servicing your clients gets a productivity multiplier of eight. Now, you may be asking, well, why are you multiplying anything? Well, I had just said that all time is not created equal. And in fact, time is money. We've all heard that saying, but time is money is not equal for everyone because we all have the same amount of time and we certainly don't all have the same amount of money. And so you ask yourself, how do other business owners succeed and grow really fast and get profitable? And the answer is, in my opinion, they are most productive. They are productive on a consistent basis. They're focusing on the right activities and they're being proactive instead of reactive. That they're not thinking of themselves as a victim of time and, you know, it just is and it's just the way things are. They're taking control of the way they're investing their time. So again, in your head as you're driving or working out or however you're listening to this episode, I want you to think of these as buckets. For every minute that you spend in the fourth bucket, which is other bucket, and that's all the activities that do not fit in the other three buckets, I am going to let you not multiply that by anything. In fact, you even might sometimes be losing time because there's an opportunity cost. There's only so much time in a day, not just in a day, but only so much time that you're going to invest in growing your business. Do you work 30 hours a week? Do you work 40 hours a week? Some of you are working 60 and 70 hours a week, but whatever that time is, there's a specific um, restraint to it that it's not unlimited amount of time. And so for every time that you choose to spend in the other bucket, it's time that you're not investing in the other three buckets. Not only is this an opportunity lost of being able to invest your time in buckets that will reap benefits such as profits, but there's something that happens to us in our mindset when we stay in the other bucket. I want you to look back at a day that was super productive. Maybe you got a couple new clients or you serviced a client in the best possible way. Those days, you went home feeling amazing about yourself, your business, and the impact you're making in the world. But the days that you look back and you were just busy, I bet you're more exhausted than ever. And when you have more days like that than not, it affects your mindset. As an entrepreneur, it is of the utmost priority that you protect your mindset. That if your mindset isn't there, you start doubting yourself. And maybe you don't show up in the world as consistently as you would like, or you don't go after the next marketing opportunity to get visible, or you don't ask for the sale, or you do not service your clients in the way in which you would if you were passionate and had a positive mindset. 
You have to protect your mindset. And having more days of just being busy and run down does not help with that at all. A consistent investment in productive activities such as marketing, sales, and servicing your clients will create consistent revenue. Alternatively, inconsistent actions breed inconsistent results. So then maximizing profitability starts with improved personal productivity and there's no way around it. So back to my definition of productivity. Productivity is investing your best time into your best activities. It's that simple. You can spend your time in the other bucket, wasting it on things that don't directly make an impact in your business or make you more money, but that's being unproductive. Or you can choose to be productive and spend it on the three buckets that we talked about, such as sales, marketing, and servicing your clients. By doing that, you're being productive. You're investing in your best activities that directly increase your profits. Now, some time in your other bucket is necessary, like I said before, and I get that. You all have a necessary administrative duties like returning phone calls, responding to emails, attending meetings and such, but for every hour you take away from the other bucket, it's an hour that you can reinvest in activities that make you money. Grow your business, make an impact. Being productive means you must be ruthless with your time and make every minute count. Time is not infinite. You can never get time back, yet you tend to spend it as if you will. You will run out of time. It's inevitable. So shouldn't you be more intentional with how you invest it? If you only had $100,000 to your name and knew that there was no way that you can make more money for the rest of your life, wouldn't you invest it differently? Wouldn't you spend it differently? Of course you would. You cannot buy more time either. So choose to spend it in a way that gives you the best return on your investment. Every minute that you spend in the other bucket instead of the other three buckets is a minute that you might as well be making it rain, just throwing money out the window. The key is to improve your productivity so you'll stop being kept busy by tasks that don't make you money. Only then will you start seeing the results you desire. Now, let me be clear. Focusing on marketing, sales, and servicing your clients are all great, but a loan may only increase your revenue. And as I stated when we started, that is not good enough. We want to focus on profits. Do you even know how profitable you are? You may know how much money that you have coming in or that you've made this year, but that's only one side of the equation because revenue doesn't always equate to profitability. From servicing my clients over the years, I have learned that so many business owners do not take the time to figure out how much money they actually have going out of their business and rarely perform some checks and balances to make sure they're actually making money. If that's you, listen up. As entrepreneurs, we often work our butts off just to break even in our businesses, and that is not okay. Let me tell you again, having a business that you either do not make a profit or you barely break even is not okay. Our businesses are here to serve us. Honestly, it's okay that it is here to serve us because our businesses serve us, our families, our communities, but they can only do that if we're profitable. Because if you're not profitable, you won't last. You simply will not be in business for the long haul. Many of you are extremely passionate about your businesses and rightfully so. The problem is, is that if you're not profitable, you're going to be cheating the world out of the impact that you can make. And that is a real problem. And I don't want that for anybody. Not you, not me, nobody. How are you going to be motivated to show up day in and day out to grow your business if it's not paying out? You're not. Again, if your business isn't profitable and you're not able to provide for your family or make an impact in your community or give back, you will be affecting your mindset. And then once your mindset is affected, then it's so much harder to show up in your business on a consistent basis and invest in those three buckets that I talked to you about. Why am I telling you this? Because I know it. I've lived it. And every client that I'm working with or have worked with has experienced this at some point in their business. And so I want to share with you, it is okay to work for profits. It is okay to focus on profits because at the end of the day, it helps everyone, your clients, because maybe maybe you can hire more employees to level up the service that you give them. 
or perhaps you are able to make more profits and and give back to your church or a cause that you are so passionate about. If you are not making money from your business, you have to increase your profitability if you want to continue living a life by design. And the very first step to becoming more profitable, even before deciding which activities you need to spend your time on, is assessing where your business is financially and consistently working hard to keep your profitability in check. I have just a few little recommendations that have made such a huge impact on my business that I want to share with you when you're looking at how to keep your business profitable. So the obvious one and the one that takes trial and error is what specifically is that right activity in the marketing bucket that will move the needle the most? What activity and how do you improve your sales process? How do you convert more leads? You need to focus on that. And then lastly, the service that you provide, how do you level that up? How do you give exceptional service so that your clients come back for more or refer you to other clients? Those are the ways that you can make sure that the impact of investing in those three buckets have the biggest impact. But past that, I want to talk to you about some ways in which I financially keep my business in check for profitability. Firstly, I cannot recommend this enough, is that you need to read the book Profit First by Mike McCallowitz. Now, I am honestly looking to have him on the show. And if anyone's listening that has a connection or knows him, please reach out to me and make an introduction because I think that he'd be an excellent guest on our show. But I read his book. And when I read his book, it changed my life. It changed my business. It changed my whole mindset about how I look at my business from a profitability standpoint. And it's not just my life, but I have several case studies of clients that their homework was to go read this profit first book. And they have had similar experiences. So go go to Amazon or in fact, you can also go to my website, theproductivityspecialist.com forward slash toolbox. And I have a direct link to his book that you can purchase there, along with a bunch of other books that have had a huge impact on my business. Okay, next is that you need to have a program to run your financial. So I use QuickBooks and I can tell you that up until last year, so 2017, I was running on the oldest version of QuickBooks. I swear it was a desktop version 2012 of QuickBooks. And I was like, yeah, it's just my books. I don't need to upgrade. And that was a huge wrong decision. You need to utilize the most current version of QuickBooks. I recommend the online version. I recommend that you sync your credit cards, your debit cards, your bank accounts, that you make it as effective and efficient as possible. You have got to be able to have your numbers. It is so important that this is not something that you do every six months or once a year when your taxes come up. You have got to know your numbers on a monthly basis, if not even more than that. And I'll go into a little bit more of that in just a minute. So QuickBooks. Again, I also have a link to that on the same page, theproductivityspecialist.com forward slash toolbox. And I link out to the QuickBooks that I use. Next, and this is actually going to sound a little funny, but it's the truth. Your accountant slash CPA should be your best friend because it is their job to ensure that you do not pay more in taxes than you need to. And an investment in them and having them as a strategic partner in your business will ensure that you put more money in your pocket and have more profitability. So ensure that you are definitely in relationship with a good accountant or CPA that understands both your industry, but also small business finances. Next, I set up a bi-monthly, so twice a month. I do it on the 10th and 25th. I block it out on my calendar. And if you looked at my calendar, it literally says profit first. On the 10th, I block out 90 minutes. And on the 25th, I block out one hour. And it's during that time that I pay all my bills, that I reconcile all my accounts, that I look through and I assign all categories to expenses. I pay myself twice a month, so I'm running payroll. And on the 10th, because it's 90 minutes, that is the time where I'm reconciling the entire past month. So all my checking accounts, any credit cards, and then I'm also reviewing my profit and loss. Now I review it in detail. I always want to know where is my money going? What are the subscriptions that I'm paying for? Where are my expenses this month relative to previous months with my contractors? It is so important that you're reviewing your profit and loss. And if you're consistent with your profit first time and 
having QuickBooks up and going on a regular basis, these numbers are always going to be accurate for you. Okay. And the other thing that I said to in here that I just want to unpack for a second is that I pay my bills twice a month. So I have regular cash flow, meaning I'm very consistent with money going out and I'm very consistent with money coming in. And when you read the Profit First book, which we do not have time to get into all the details, but I let all my income sit into an income account and then I distribute it out to my various accounts twice a month as well. And that's also the same time I'm paying off my bills. Now, through this profit first time and being super focused on this, I have been able to pay myself a consistent salary for over a year now. And prior to that, my mindset was, well, I need to invest in the business some more, or I have this other project that I need to do. That is not the right mindset. The mindset is, is that I work my ass off in my business and I deserve a paycheck. I remember working corporate, begging for, well, okay, not begging, but in my in my eyes, asking for a raise or trying to justify that I deserved a certain salary. And yet when I started my business, I wasn't having that same conversation with myself. Trust me, I have it with myself now. And there's no place to be negotiating for a 50 cent raise, a dollar raise, or anything like that. I give myself a raise on a regular basis based on the performance in my business. And the other thing is, is that I have just as a tidbit, like you have to save your tax money because I have got several clients, um, my one-on-one clients, so high-end clients that are doing very well in their businesses, but have huge tax liabilities from previous years. And that tax liability, let me be straight with you. It affects your freaking mindset. It affects you wanting to go out and increase your revenue. It affects your focus because you've got the IRS down your neck or you're getting audited. Do not get in that situation. And if you're in that situation, please do what you need to do to get it off your back. And when I say I have other clients at this very time, I have five clients that are dealing with this day in and day out with some huge tax liabilities. And because I have five clients dealing with this, I know that there's many of you listening that have the same thing. Now, I don't have the tax liability issue. I've always been able to stay on top of my taxes. But the mindset shift that I've done is that I literally cannot wait until I can file my taxes. In fact, I will probably be one of the first people to file my taxes in January because I have all this money sitting in an account to pay my taxes. And since I have a great relationship with my accountant and I'm being strategic, I'm hoping to pay them what they need to be paid and then I get the rest. And I plan on cashing that out. So if I get an excess of $5,000 that's sitting in that account that I don't need to pay the IRS, I plan on taking that out and taking my family on a vacation. Talk about a mindset shift. So just to recap, Read the book Profit First. Get an account accounting program. I recommend QuickBooks. Have a great relationship with your accountant and CPA. He should be your best friend, strategic partner. Have a profit first time on your calendar. I recommend probably 90 minutes on the 10th and an hour on the 25th, but this will determine on how much you're looking at and what kind of numbers and time frame. So you get a process together. You're going to be as efficient as you can be within that time. And I think those are some just quick and dirty, some recommendations to focus on profitability. By improving your productivity, you will have more time and energy to take massive focus action on your business. You'll also attain more clarity on how to achieve your goals because you'll have more time to invest on your high value productive activities. You'll be able to outperform the competition, dominate the market, and still have time for what matters most. Finally, you'll be able to have more time for your marketing activities, for your sales activities, and for servicing your clients, which means you're going to be more profitable and completely sustainable. Alrighty, so before we end today, I want to just let you know that I have a special download for you. I have a download that I call 10 Ways You're Screwing Your Productivity. And it's not just another PDF download. Many of the habits that you engage in, although possibly well-intentioned, actually hinder you from achieving far more. They're costing you time, money, energy, lost opportunities, and clients. Once you download this PDF, you can click on any of those 10 ways that you may be screwing your productivity, and it's going to take you directly to the resources such as a specific podcast episode or an article that will give you what you need to stop screwing your productivity. So go download it. Download it today. Take a look at the list and have an honest conversation with yourself. Which of these items on this list are you doing that are possibly screwing your productivity? 
If you want it, you can simply go to theproductivityspecialist.com forward slash screw. Again, it's free. It's my gift to you. I want you to stop screwing your productivity. I want you to be more productive. I want you to increase your profitability. And one of the next steps that you can take to do this is by going to theproductivityspecialist.com forward slash screw, S-C-R-E-W. Hey, hey, thank you for tuning in to this episode this week. I told you to stay tuned for some bonus content. And what I want to share with you is that this process of teaching the three buckets, which you just heard, has actually evolved into the four buckets of high value activities. So along the way, I realized that there was a bucket missing and I wanted to update the process. And so here it is. The fourth bucket is leadership bucket. And as our businesses grow, we are going to be building a team because what I know for sure is that we can't do this alone. We can't build and achieve our dreams solely by ourselves. So as we're building our team, one of the highest value activities that you could be pouring your time in, investing your time into is the leadership bucket. And ultimately, your leadership bucket will probably be where a large portion of your time is going as you are building your team and you have people that are taking, you know, the role of a lot of the other activities that fall in the other bucket. But also once the other bucket is taken care of, for the most part, you will be probably looking at growing your team in ways of hiring somebody to help with bucket number one, which is marketing and visibility, or perhaps perhaps sales isn't your true strength. And so you will hire someone to help you with sales, or perhaps you will replicate yourself and build your team around adding additional people who can service your clients. These buckets are the most important buckets, but you are not the only one that will be wearing that hat for the duration of your business. So the leadership bucket will show up in ways of making sure that your team is supported, has what they need. You are um, giving them the time to delegate properly, giving them the information they need, meeting with your team on a regular basis, a one-on-one meetings or group team meetings. These should not be something that is thought of as something that's getting in the way of the other work or the more important work. Doing the activities of supporting your team and showing up for them is truly one of the ways that you can get the most return on your time. As you invest in others, you are ultimately investing in your business and in yourself. So I am highly encouraging you, depending on the stage of business that you're in, where appropriate, you are actually allocating more and more time in the leadership bucket. All right. So those are the four buckets. So just to recap, the first bucket is marketing and visibility, which overflows to give you the sales bucket. And when you're investing your time in the sales bucket, it overflows into servicing your clients. And then the fourth bucket is leadership. All else falls under the other bucket. And that other bucket may have some important activities in there. Rightfully so, we run real businesses and live real lives. But your high value activities that are non-negotiables that will help you propel yourself towards your goals will ultimately be found in these first four buckets. Okay, so I have loved having you listen to this episode of Productivity Straight Talk, but I need to be straight with you. No change, no change. Without taking action, nothing will change for you or your business. So based on what you heard today, what are you going to take action on? To help you take action, I have a free resource that I've created just for this episode, and I call it the High Value Activity Identifier. Now, this freebie was not around back in episode 35, but I have since created this because I think it's highly valuable and 100% on point with this episode. So when you download this freebie, it's actually able to be used two different ways, and I'm going to encourage you to use it two different ways. The first way is to brain dump. I want you to use this worksheet and fill in each of the buckets of the specific activities that would fall under marketing and visibility. What will fall under sales activities? Be clear and concise. What are the exact activities that fall under servicing your clients and what types of activities fall under leadership? 
And this is really, really helpful because when we get clear up front about what those activities are, then we can be proactive and purposeful with getting those activities on our calendar. And it also helps with you not negotiating yourself into major gray areas of justifying activities that could be under a bucket, but maybe shouldn't be under a bucket, but we kind of label it as high value activities so that we feel better about where we're investing our time. I think you know what I mean. And so with taking just a few minutes to get really clear and brain dump about what it is and what activities fall under each of these categories or buckets, I think you will be able to definitely, definitely increase your productive time. The second way that you can use this download is to use it as a time audit. I use this worksheet actually with my one-on-one clients. And so you are getting some of those resources here today. And the way that you can do that is to print off the worksheet and have it with you next to your desk. And as you go throughout the day over several days, each activity that you are investing your time in, I want you to identify where that activity would land on one of these five buckets. So is that activity a marketing visibility, a sales bucket, servicing your client, a leadership bucket, or is it ultimately falling under the other bucket? I would really, really love for you to download this resource so that you can get that data and feedback and really evaluate where your time is being invested so that you can make a choice about where your time is being invested tomorrow. You can download that at theproductivityspecialist.com forward slash one, two, one download. Again, that's theproductivityspecialist.com forward slash one, two, one download. Make sure you go grab that freebie. All right. So I have a special thank you going out to Atomic Kitten 99, who recently said, so thrilled to have accessed the useful content Amber continues to put out. She's a wealth of knowledge. I love her straight shooter approach as well as her candid insights into her own business. Thank you so much, Atomic Kitten 99, for taking the time to leave a review on iTunes. If you've also found this podcast to be useful, I would love for you to take a moment and share a review wherever you're listening to this podcast today. Or you can also just hit the share button inside of your podcast player app and share it with a fellow entrepreneur who you think would find this episode and podcast show valuable. Thank you so much for tuning in. That's my straight talk for today. And until next time, have a productive week. 